Jermaine, man, how's it going? It's going good, man. How are you? I'm doing good, man. Now, if I'm not mistaken, it's your birthday next week. Am I right? It is. That's Turn awesome, man. Effect. Let's get it. Well, you've been talking a lot about how challenging it is for kind of portrait and engagement and studio stuff. I thought it would be interesting challenge to see if you could handle a couple days in my shoes out there in the wild. What do you think? In the wild where? Well, I'm thinking of Alaska. What if we head to Alaska? We photograph bears, we photograph bald eagles, foxes, pretty much anything else we can see out there and really get a chance to see what you're capable of doing when you're outside your comfort zone. You know what? I like the sound of that. Um, hey, let's do it. However, if you're going to challenge me with that, then I challenge you to come into my world and you got to come and shoot some portraits. All right. All out right. Of your comfort zone. Hey, fair enough, man. Challenge accepted. Now, before we go, uh, make sure that you pack some waterproof shoes and make sure you bring some bug spray. All right. Got it. Excellent, man. All right, I'll see you out there. This is setting up to be a nightmare already. I can see it. Lord. Get my Kobe Brown on. All right, so we're out here in Turnigan Arm here, uh, about 40 minutes south of Anchorage. And this is kind of the spot where I wanted to come and bring Jermaine out to photograph bald eagles. Now, what we have to do is we're essentially waiting for low tide. Right now, we're actually standing on um, sand. Well, this will be underwater in about six, seven hours. And so we're really close to low tide. We've walked out quite far and we got some beautiful bald eagles over here. And what we're gonna do, Jermaine, is that we're gonna focus our attention on getting some of these bald eagles kind of perched on the sand first. Yep. And then from there, what we're gonna do as we inch closer is we're gonna change our settings. We're gonna go for faster shutter speeds and higher ISOs so that once we get close, we're prepared for once they take off, right? Yep. Uh, so what do you have right now on your setup? I'm dialed in 1250 ISO, 2500 shutter speed. Okay, perfect. And which cameras are you using? So I am know? using the A1 with the Sony G 200 to 600. Excellent. And see the 200 to 600 is a really great choice right now for this kind of light because we have sunlight happening behind us. Uh, we got a decent amount of light to work with. So even though it's a variable aperture of F, uh, 5.6 to 6.3, with good light, it is a great affordable lens to use for wildlife photography. It's another bubble. It's okay. <laughs> right, right in the middle of the scene, man. Come on. I'm, look, I'm sinking. Like, oh, that was. Yeah, I was, yeah. Ain't too, ain't too many brothers standing in the ocean. I mean, look, look at, look at this. You see, you see this? Look at this. That thing is ready to bust me to go underneath. The challenge is that you want to be kind of on the go and ready yeah. as you get closer. So kind of have your camera, even though we're tri uh, tripod holding, and kind of like dialing in as we get out there, because if we get too close, he's gonna take off, and that's gonna be a really great, some really great shots. Oh, there he goes. Oh, he's gonna land right here. What's interesting for Jermaine is that while he really focuses on his kind of portrait engagement stuff, he has a lot of experience with sports photography, which is very similar in the sense that you're working with fast moving subjects, um, you have to work on tracking and composition. So there's a lot of that same principles that apply to wildlife photography. You're just doing it out in a environment that is colder and wetter and uh, you know sometimes more rugged. And so I think that's the part where we're kind of getting used to for Jermaine. But overall, I think it's going great. I think he's gonna get some great stuff here. You got waterproof shoes too? Yeah. I told you when, when we did packing, man, I told you waterproof shoes only. I told you no cotton. And I told you waterproof Gore-Tex shoes. Well, I didn't remember that part. Make sure that you pack some waterproof shoes. Got it. So do they sell them at Walmart? I'll get some. So. I was sinking in this quicksand that we're in and uh, just had time, you know, fast shutter speed. I uh, wanted to get him. Looked like he was eating something, didn't know what, but I wanted to get that shot before he kind of took off. We were getting a little bit closer. 
Uh, as Kobe was saying, uh, you know, you got to be real quiet and stealthy out here because they can see everything. So I uh, had a quick second to get it and uh, got it. And as we speak, I'm sinking again <laughs> and getting my foot wet. <laughs> That's not my National Geographic standard that I was going for. So that's like a decent shot. If I crop in too close, I'll see uh, the technical things that I did wrong. Damn, get some waterproof shoes. I bet they sell them at Walmart too. All right, so where are we at, Jermaine? Where is this? You tell me. What's the location? <laughs> you, you tell, tell me. me. <laughs> what is this? This is beautiful, isn't it? It is gorgeous. So this area is called the Portage Glacier. I read that on the way in, yeah. This is pretty nice. <laughs> well, we gotta talk to them, man. <laughs> so this is your first official time holding an Alaskan iceberg. There you go. That's for you, from me, my heart to you. Oh, thank you. <laughs> Smells delicious. <laughs> Tastes like iceberg. <laughs> it's really good. Am I supposed to do this? We come out here to Alaska to film wildlife. And this is what we get. This is what's happening all the whole time, man. Hey. How am I supposed to make a wildlife hey, video? I'm, I'm recording my journey out here in Alaska. Unlike working with a model, unlike working with a landscape, like you have almost no control over your subject, right? Yep. So it's about having the right gear and the right settings, the right knowledge of being in the right place at the right time. So it takes a bit more effort to kind of come away with some amazing images. You know what, it's one of those things, it's like the reward is so great because of the patience and yeah, everything required, that you right? apply to it, yep. yep. Absolutely. That's why I love the challenge. That's why I wanted to do this. I wanted to see if I had what it takes to get that shot, you know. Got my shot. Got my shot. Got my shot. Hey. Oh, it's beautiful. Look at that right there. Tack sharp. Tack sharp. Because we were so close, bro. Like, oh my God. That's amazing. That's the shot that you want. Hell That's the yeah. bald eagle shot that you want. It takes patience out there. We've been out here all day trying to get bald eagle shots and we struggled because we haven't been able to get close or the light wasn't good. We've waited here to the end of the day. The sun is setting down here at the end of uh, turning an arm and we're able to get close to about four different bald eagles here, creeping up about 10, 15 feet at a time, going super slow, being patient but the results paid off. I was a little disappointed at first because I was like, man, I really wanted um, the shot starting out. Uh, usually at portraits and weddings, uh, I nail it on the first shot. I'm like, bam, got and just walk away and do like the walk off, you know? Not here, man. It's like, you gotta be very patient, have to be diligent, you have to be disciplined. And um, yeah, man, I was, I was ready for this challenge, but I didn't realize I was gonna love it this much. See, this is a great example when you want to have mud boots and not Nike Nikes. non uh, non waterproof shoes. Yeah, clearly. I mean, I I'm a shoe guy, and literally, these shoes are ruined. So, I uh, definitely gonna be ordering some more when I get back <laughs> to the cabin. Let me just jump in on that. I told him to get waterproof shoes, and he didn't listen. So this one's on him. The what rest of say? it, the rest of it's on me. This, what did he say? This this one's on him. This battery been dead for a week. <laughs> <laughs> it's the easiest way to cross over. You're good, buddy. <laughs> Got my foot. <laughs> <laughs> He's stuck. <laughs> oh my god. Damn. If you slide your way out, buddy. <laughs> I think we lost Jermaine. He's leaving. He's heading back to Chicago. <laughs> no more mud. So another option if you're interested in wildlife photography, but you don't have a ton of time when you visit a specific location is to visit a place like we're at right now, which is the Alaska Wildlife Conservation Center. Now this center is located an hour south of Anchorage and it is a great location in order to learn more about the species in a given region, but also support amazing centers like this, which do a lot to rehabilitate animals that can't be released back into the wild for various reasons. Here at the Alaska Wildlife Conservation Center, you can photograph Alaska coastal brown bears, black 
bears, foxes, muskox, elk, and much more. So overall, if you are interested in photography, you don't have a lot of time, but you still want to see a lot of wildlife in a given location, search out for conservation centers like this that are doing great work there and need your support. All right, so even though we're out here in the elements, uh, in this beautiful, beautiful place in Alaska, God dog it. Just when I said it was beautiful, right? These mosquitoes are. <sighs> Mike, come on. So Jermaine. What? What do you think about the bugs? These bugs. How much of this we gotta do, man? Alright, yeah, one more time. From the top. What? Jermaine, what do you think about the <laughs> What do, you think about the, what do you think about the folks in Alaska? They suck. They're huge. They're not even normal size mosquitoes. They're like, you ever watch the show Naked and Afraid? It's those kind of mosquitoes. They come from Uganda, then they pass through all these other countries and they eat up food and they get bigger and they come here. Like, I legit think that's what it is. Like, har horrible. Like, right now. <laughs> <sighs> I'm getting ate up literally while I'm doing this. Like, this is not fun at all. Like, I'm legit. Yeah. <laughs> 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 all right, we are out here just outside of the Anchorage airport, getting ready to fly on this beautiful beast back here to go to the famed Lake Clark National Park where we are gonna focus our attention now on the Alaska coastal brown bears. I'm super excited. I don't know if Jermaine's ever flown in a plane this fall, but I know that he is pretty excited and I think that we're gonna get some good stuff. All right, see how it goes. One of the things that we did see right along out here were uh, the bears. You could see them walking around, moving, um, and I was just eager. I'm just like ready to get out and grab my camera and, and get these guys, man. They're just chilling in their natural habitat, so uh, ready to get to it. Jermaine's the talent. Kobe's the extra. Take one. <laughs> you got a question for us? No, we're gonna just do the kind of intro piece to it. I'm just gonna lean back and get my sexy on out Oh here. dear Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> so we finally made it here. We're in Chinitna Bay, which is part of Lake Clark National Park. And we found a couple bears out here and we're trying to essentially be a little bit patient. So one of the keys with wildlife photography is to be patient and wait for the right moment. The wild side of wild, wildlife is essentially that we can't control the bears. Just like we can't control the weather. Uh, right now it's, you know, bright bluebird sky. And ideally we'd want a little bit more even light with some cloud cover, but we can't control that. So we're gonna make do with the best of what we can. Yep, gotta be patient out here. It's not one of those things where you can just uh, rush into a scene. Uh, typically when I'm shooting weddings and portraits, um, I'm kind of directing the scene. Sometimes you have to wait for certain things to come to you, wait for moments. Uh, so it's one of those things you have to balance when you're out here. Uh, you have to respect their space. You have to uh, keep your distance. Uh, it's one of those safety things. You know, for us, we want to respect their boundaries. We want to keep ourselves um, away from their areas. We don't want to in encroach on them. We want to keep that relationship going. So we always want to keep our distance. We don't want to put them or paint them into a corner. So we're going to keep safety in mind when we're out here. We're going to have some fun. Hopefully we're going to come away with some great images as well. Safety is key. Heard they like dark meat. I'm not trying to be on anybody's menu today, buddy. <laughs> So this is the closest that we've gotten to the Alaska Coastal Brown Bear, probably about 50, maybe so meters away. Both of us are set up right now with the 600 F4 and the 400 F2.8, both on A1s. We're getting some really great shots. We're trying to be as quiet as possible. 
We also want the bear to get a little bit closer so we can fill more of our frame with our shots. This is a pretty special experience and I'm pretty excited to see what Jermaine gets out of this. All right, so we just wrapped up our bear experience on this guy right over here. Uh, we saw many of them, but this was the one that we got the closest to. Um, had to be very quiet, uh, very reserved, sit back and just watch them in this element. And right now they're eating a ton of sage grass, which they love because they weren't even paying any attention to us. So right now, as Jermaine said, they're eating sage grass, they're clamming. In about a month they get a bit more active, but we still got really lucky getting this close yep. and coming away with some great images. So this is actually, this is a big success out here at Lake Clark. It's a true craft being out here. It's, it's really not for the faint of heart, okay? The bugs are crazy out here. You deal with the elements, you're dealing with wind, um, you're dealing with having to be quiet. You ha have to deal with so many different variations. And I believe this is only gonna help me become a better photographer, uh, not just for wildlife and nature, but also when I shoot portraits and also when I shoot uh, sports and other things. And I really believe I can apply this to other things as well. So, that was a week. <laughs> hey, it was a week. Uh, man, it was everything I expected and more. You survived the bugs? Barely. You survived the cold? You survived the wind? Normally I'd say you survived the rain, but we've had mostly bluebird skies out here in Alaska for almost four or five days in a row. But what, was, you know, what were some of your favorite moments? I wanna say my favorite moment was crouching through the brush and sneaking up on the eagles, uh, getting as close as possible, uh, and getting some of those really, really good crisp shots because from further away, it just wasn't working. So we had to get way closer. Also, uh, we went to the conservation uh, center and we got up close with Patron, the bear. I think that was my favorite because she came out the water and was like, just gave me this look and she was like, <laughs> and I was like, do that. Yes, do your thing and um, got a shot. It's my favorite shot of the entire trip. So I hated the bugs, but I enjoyed everything else. The cold, not so much. It was the bugs that I hated the most, but it was the bears I loved the most. The bears. You have some good images, man. I mean, I think that's at the end of the day, wildlife photography is difficult because, as you know, unpredictable. It's unpredictable. You can't control it. You can't control your subjects. It's not working with models. You can't control the weather and you got to make do with what you have. And it's all about being in the right place at the right time with the right gear and having your cameras and everything dialed in. And then coming back to the bald eagles that night that we had, um, you know, photographing here on Turnigan Arm, the light was beautiful. Absolutely. The wind was low. We were able to get some really nice, you know, close-ish shots, but of birds in action, birds in flight, birds perching on the sandbanks, um, you know, birds, you know, almost fishing. I mean, all sorts of great stuff. I wanted to create a situation that allowed you to delve into wildlife photography, but on your own terms, you know, right. to use your experience to let me help guide you a little bit here and there, but mostly see what you can do. And, and I was blown away with the stuff, man. The experience, it, and I think wildlife is so different than anything else because it's so unpredictable. You can't reschedule because of the weather. It's like, you gotta get it or you're not gonna get it. But it's the journey and the process and meeting some of the amazing people that we met um, at the Glacier Lodge. That, that was like the icing on the cake for the entire trip. It was everything I envisioned plus more. And I'm excited that we we're able to do it. And I, I hope everyone out there loved it and enjoy it. And I can't wait for you guys to see the next trip. We're going to Vegas and I get to teach him how to do portraits. We're going to be doing posing, talking about lighting. This is going to be fun. I get to get some payback in the desert. This is going to be a blast. So yeah, I'm looking forward to the adventure uh, and seeing it continue and seeing where we go from there. We're really excited. Thank you guys yes. for watching. I hope you guys enjoyed this as much as we enjoyed making it for you guys. Uh, and like we said, our next video is going to have us switch roles and I will be the one out of place. So I'm, I'm super excited for that. Uh, and we'll see you guys there. Cheers.
turn it out. To the left. To the right. Two hops. Take it back now, y'all. First uh, work water balls and two things. Well, I think Jermaine is an incredible photographer, first off, but I'd say that maybe his dance moves are a little bit better than his photography, because I saw his dance moves after he got the shot, and it's pretty incredible, as you can see. <laughs>